the intro music. Yeah! Woohoo! Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today, taking a look at Hugh and the X Borg faction. I want to break it down and give you the basics of everything that you need to know in terms of the faction store, the research, and the freebooter hostiles. Now, real quick, just to let you know, this video is not meant to be exhaustive. I don't want to cover everything and go over the every little detail, but I do want to give you all the best knowledge to get started now and how this exactly is going to work. Now, for those that are going to ask the graphics, yes, they're in the Discord, the FTFC General Channel. In particular, we're going to be taking a look at one of them made by FTFC's very own, one of our players, Jules Verne. Now, if you've not seen their work, we've got them in our Discord. They do a lot of the graphs and a lot of the graphics that we refer to. Now, what I want to do is, again, cover the basics. So I'm not going to go over cost of a lot of the research and stuff, but how you should start the export faction whenever you start watching this video. So let me take this image off the screen for now. But we will come back to it. So let's start how it works. To unlock the x -Borg faction, there is a mission that you need to get. As soon as you hit level 38, will be available in your holo deck. Unlock the mission, or going through the mission, then unlocks the faction. That is step one. The next thing that happens is unlocking this will then give you dailies. Now, as you can see, I've completed my dailies, but thanks to the very great community that we have, here are the dailies on the screen. Funny enough, the daily that pays out the most is actually the easiest daily, where you have to kill two hostiles. Now, there will be variances to these dailies, but for now, we're going to focus on the very beginning and how the dailies work, all right? Again, we can have a video where we go into a little bit more detail later, but this is kind of the quick and dirty. Make sure that everybody's up to snuff and you're ready to go for this. So you'll do the dailies to get rep and the credits that are needed. Now, real quickly, listen to me. These credits are used on both the research and the faction stores. So you want to be very careful. Now, thanks to the value of a $100 pack, I can show you some of these immediately. And what I mean by that is right here, you're going to have immediate value to making your grind better in Star Trek Fleet Command. You're going to be able to do things like this. Some things anyway. For example, Romulan Sweep. Why is this research important? What Romulan Sweep does is all the sweeps, there's four of them, are going to take the uh, freebooting hostiles and make them equal value to this. So if I do this research, then I will have completed my Romulan dailies by going and killing the freebooter hostiles, which is already a daily. Complete all three of these researches and the swarm sweep and essentially killing hostiles will do five dailies in one. It'll do your swarms, your freebooters, and your Federation Klingon Romulan. But you can choose how you go after that. You also have other researches here. And a lot of these researches, as you can see, are based on the rep not having to progress through the tree. Now, you do need to progress through to get the swarm sweep, but you can actually do these in the first week of the game, going through the dailies through the first week. Now, I do also want to point out something real quick because a lot of people have been asking. So, if you are listening, you do need to wait for dailies to reset. So, if I complete Romulan Sweep right now, I will not then be able to go do Freebooters this moment. I have to wait for the reset for that to get added into my account. That's okay. It means the next day it's going to be a lot easier for me to complete my dailies and activate my goals. And it says here at the bottom, activates after daily reset. There are a lot of other researches in here that are actually very valuable, a lot of efficiency researches, including the mantras refinery getting a little bit of love there. But the main ones that you want to focus on at the beginning of the export faction are these sweeps. But I will tell you that you're going to want to really dive into these research in the beginning. Ignore the faction itself and invest those export credits in the faction. Now, back out real quick, let's talk about the faction and then we're going to cover freebooter hostiles. One neat thing about this is not only is the export faction designed to make your gameplay a little bit quicker, a little bit less grindy with the research, but also here, uh, the, the way that it's done is these special ships are weighted by the level that you brought them to or the tier that you brought them to. So for example, my Mantis is tier five. If I don't want to grind Mantis today, but I still want to get my Syndicate XP draw, well, I can actually spend 400 credits, which I would get that day, and there, now I don't actually have to go and grind Venom. Now, that's not enough to do all my pulls, but it would be enough to get my Syndicate XP. Now, if I go to my Stella, this is not you know the same as a Max Stella, but it is still speeding up the process a lot. Now, granted, I do really want to push to y'all. I encourage you do the research first. 
Now this um, research and everything is, I think where the main value is and the values everywhere. And there you see the rep levels based on your ops level, number of resources, credits, etc. there, thanks to Jules Verne's chart. This is all very important. And I do really, 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 truly like what the Borg faction presents. You can see my Talios is too low level to get a good one. It's got this crappy Latinum thing. Please don't click this and waste your credits. But my Meridian's maxed. I can pull every day now. So not only do I have research that saves me grind time, I now have the faction itself, which is basically designed to allow me to skip certain grinds by doing my dailies. So overall, this is a huge addition to the game that's allowing players to save a lot of time. But let's talk about the freebooter hostiles real quick and how you should crew. Because a lot of you are going to try the standard, Pike Moreau Chin. But they've actually designed these to where that actually does not work very well. Let me explain why. Now, you can do it, but you're not going to notice a lot of success. And I've already had players come to me and say, hey, Rev, this is getting me absolutely wrecked. Well, real quick, let me go and show you the meta which is most effective tactic available. The meta for these is actually to run Tau, but I know many of you out there are like, well, Rev, I didn't buy Tau. Don't worry, you're okay. But this is currently the way to go. If you've got Tau running Beverly uh, Giorgio Tau or, or running the Strange New World Officer Giorgio Tau or even running Pike Giorgio Tau, this is the way you punch up really high. But what if you don't want to punch up high like you're fighting an Actian hostile? What if you just want to get your dailies done and you want to get the most effective grind that you can. Well, let me show you the basic crews of how this works, and then I'll explain why it works. Here are four crews on your screen. These are some of the most common crews that you will see. This does not mean that there aren't players out there who have better crews or better experience, but I want to explain why the, these crews work how they do. Far left side, I went full synergy. You see that one actually only gets me 1.6 kills per hole. The reason being is I don't have those maxed. If you had your Strange New World Officers max, or if I had a max, I would actually perform a good bit better. But for a lot of players, you're not going to have Strange New World Pike max and Hemmer and Ortegas. So you do kind of want to keep that in mind. The most effective crew that I think every player who's listening will have access to is Strange New World Officer. So in my case, Katinga, Battleship. You want to make sure you're specific to the right ship. Gorkhan, Khan. It's a very similar to crew to what a lot of high levels used to run back before they added Strange New Worlds. You can also run five Gorkon Khan. You can also run Beverly Gorkon Khan. All those are viable. But as you can see here, I get the most kills for my account with the Katinga as a tier three ship, by the way, hitting a level 45 hostile. So I'm using a weaker ship below my level to punch up and I'm able to get 16 kills out of it. Also get a little bit better result with Picard Beverly Chin than, as you can see, with Pike Moreau Chin. And I'll explain why here in a second when we actually look at the hostile itself, because they are built very uniquely. So overall, though, you see running a non-traditional crew is able to allow you to easily complete your new dailies. And if you've actually done the research already, well, now those new dailies, you get those six kills, that's going to do all your daily. So lots of time saving. Just in the warp, uh, I actually calculated just in the warp travel times I've saved, I am saving 43 minutes in travel times now thanks to Freebooters. So let's get out of this and explain why these hostiles are a little bit different and why Pipe and Road Chin won't work the exact same way, okay? So hit the little I button here on these Freebooters. <coughs> Sorry for the call. I'm not even going to bother editing that out. I'm trying to get this video out quickly. So you'll notice that they have insane amounts of hull health. They are very, very beefy but they don't have a lot of attack. You'll actually scroll down, compare my Katinga. My Katinga has double the amount of DPR, damage per round, as the Freebooters, but the Freebooters have a lot of hull health. And they also have this ship ability called Ravager's Lance, which means that they have a huge buff to piercing. This is exactly why Moreau is not as good as Beverly fighting these hostiles. And I know the first thing a lot of players are gonna say is, well, Rev, I don't have Picard yet, I don't have Beverly yet, et cetera, et cetera. That's fine. That's why you had the other crew that I just showed you. But if you did have Picard, Beverly, and wanted to use this, the reason that Beverly is better than Moreau is look at Moreau's ability. They both are working on affecting mitigation, but, I'm oh, sorry, that's Chin. I need this one. Uh, Moreau is trying to decrease the piercing values while our friends over here at Ravager's Lance are actually increasing it. So 
this is kind of negating what Moreau's trying to do. Beverly, is, instead of lowering the opponent's piercing, is boosting your mitigation. She tends to do a little bit better. If I back out this log, I think I've got one. This one? There we go. So now you can see the battle going significantly different because I'm using Beverly instead, who is boosting my mitigation based on officer stats instead of trying to lower the piercing values uh, of the enemy ship. So slight difference there. That's why Picard Beverly outperforms, but it's still not the best run you can do. But the piercing value is big. And then also these things shoot a lot. What I mean a lot is the interceptor. So I'm using a battleship right now. The interceptor actually fires 10 shots, but most of them are energy shots. They have a mix though of kinetic and energy and both weapons do about the equal amount of power. So this hostile was basically designed to not be very good if you're using Pike Maroche. It also is advantageous for you to follow the battle triangle. If you're in a battleship, fight the explorers. If you're an explorer, fight the interceptor and vice versa. So now that you have the basic run of crews, and I'll put this out there, if y'all need this, I can provide it on my Discord, of course. Everybody's welcome to join there. The link is in the description of this video. And hopefully this gives you a good idea of how to focus your faction, how to focus your hostile grinding, and how to really start enjoying what this game is introduced for level 38 plus to make it less grindy for everybody, allowing you to focus on more things you enjoy. So hopefully this quick and dirty answers your questions. If it didn't, please leave your questions and comments down in the comments section below, and I will try to help you out or another one of our amazing players will do that. Live long and prosper, everybody. Stay safe for those space cowboys. Deuces, that's me. Catch you on the next one. Love you. Appreciate you. I'm out. An even better outro than the intro. For the empire and glory to your house.